This is the apparatus you'll be using for your experiment. A flat metal disc attached to a hub that is free to rotate. A cylindrical metal block is attached to the hub by a piece of string. If we wind the string around the hub and release the disc, the falling block causes the disc to rotate. The descending block is similar to a falling ball. This is a situation you should be very familiar with. The total energy of the ball earth system is constant. So the gravitational potential energy lost by the system must be equal to the kinetic energy gained by the system. The ball of mass M has fallen a distance H. And so the ball earth system has lost the potential energy MGH. If the speed of the ball is V, its kinetic energy is half mv squared. So we have mgh equals half mv squared. In the case of the falling block and rotating disc, as before we have that the potential energy lost equals the kinetic energy gained. Also as before we have an object of mass m falling a height h. So the left hand side of the equation is mgh. However, on the right hand side, we now have the kinetic energy of the block plus the kinetic energy of the rotating disc. If the speed of the block is v and the disc's angular velocity is omega, then the right hand side is half mv squared plus half i omega squared, where i is the moment of inertia of the disk about its center. The apparatus allows us to measure the time for one rotation of the disk. So in the pre-lab questions for this experiment, you'll need to work out how you can calculate the rotational speed of the disk and the speed of the falling mass given the time for one rotation of the disk. You'll use this timer to measure the time taken for one turn of the disk. You need to plug it into the photo gate and plug it into the mains. The photo gate consists of a laser diode one side of the disk and a detector on the other. There is a very small hole on the edge of the disc through which the laser light can pass. Don't confuse it with the larger holes used for attaching weights. When the hole passes the laser diode, light from the laser falls onto the detector and the timer starts. When it passes it again the timer stops. In this way you can determine the number of seconds it takes for one rotation of the disc. The timer should be set to time one revolution, otherwise you're timing how long it takes the hole to pass the photo gate not very long. You'll assume the disc is stationary when the timer starts, so make sure you release the disc with the hole just in front of the photo gate. You're also assuming the weight of the block is applying a constant force on the disc while the clock is running. So until the clock stops, the block must not hit the ground. Later in the experiment, you'll be increasing the rotational inertia of the disk by adding additional masses like this.